What's going on YouTube? Champer Productions coming back at you with another Transformers video review and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series 86 Deluxe Class Jazz. Now, as always, we will start by taking a look at the packaging. The packaging is done pretty much the same as all these Studio Series uh, boxes throughout the entire line. As we can see, we got Jazz here and whatnot. The only thing that really changes is that we got 86 here on the side and 01, but everything else stays the same. You got pictures of Jazz everywhere, Deluxe Class Jazz, Transformers. On this side, we've got 86 and then another four body picture of Jazz and on the top here we just got Transformers of the movie on the bottom here is just warnings and stuff and on the back of the box you got all your read ups you know big screen inspired blah 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 uh, moon base one destruction that's the scene and then uh, he converts in 20 steps and you see him in his robot mode and his vehicle mode and his little bio right. and if you want to read that you can read that right there but moving right along on the insert here he comes with Moon Base 1, as you can see, and that looks pretty good as a display option, so hooray for a backdrop. Now, as far as accessories go, he does come with his iconic blaster, which has been done in a nice silver, so very nice. He does come with his instruction manual, which, if you know Studio Series instruction manuals, they are all hard to read. And then he does come with a warning sheet. Yay! And here we have Studio Series 86 Deluxe Class Jazz in his vehicle mode. And the vehicle mode for this looks like Jazz. It's G1 Jazz's car mode. It's all there is to it, really. It looks really good. There are a few things I have kind of heard people complain about. It doesn't bother me, personally. It's just the nitpick but i am going to point it out anyway uh but first off taking a look at the details and whatnot you can see we got all the molded detail here on the front of the car we've got the nice blue and red striping here on the top and then across the front here we've actually got a red stripe and then some blue paint some silver which looks really really nice got some more silver there on the wheels and then number 14 here on the side now believe it or not this whole uh roof section is casted in translucent plastic and painted white this part for me scares me the most about this figure. This is the biggest issue, and I'll talk about this, this during the transformation, but this is the biggest issue I have with this figure because it's terrifying during the transformation. But moving along, you know, we've got all the silver paint on the wheels and whatnot. The feet kind of jut out the back, yeah. Uh, that doesn't really bother me all too much. It could be worse uh, in terms of kibble, but I mean, overall, it looks really good. It rolls pretty well for a car with peg on wheels. Um, yeah, it just looks really good. Now, you can store his blaster on top. There is a 5mm port right there that just plugs in. I'm not going to put it in all the way because I don't want to risk chipping the paint here. So, um, But yeah, there we have the car mode for Jazz. Looks really, really good. I like it. Now, for size comparison with another Studio Series Jazz, here is the, o yeah, the 2007 Studio Series Jazz. And as we can see... These cars have nothing in common, but, you know, for size comparison, we can see that the uh, 2007 version of Jazz from the live-action movie is quite a smaller version, uh, it's quite a smaller figure in car mode, so there you have that. Let's bring in the Transformers Power of the Primes Deluxe Class Jazz, so we can see the difference between these two, and uh, the Power of the Primes Jazz is a little bit bigger, as we can see, but there you have that and just for a transformers studio series or a transformers the movie reference let's bring in springer because why not we've got better things to do the night and die i got better things to do tonight than die so there we have that give you a little bit of sense of scale so there are there are our size com our little there are our size comparisons now for the transformation on Jazz, it is pretty simplistic. Um, there are a few things I will caution you about, as I mentioned earlier in the review, um, with this roof section. But to start off with, what we are going to want to do is take the doors here on the side and untab them, like so. And then just get, wiggle the legs some just to get enough clearance. I don't really know how to get my nails under here because it's hard to do so I just wiggle the legs until they break free you don't want to go manhandling this part because again this is all casted in translucent plastic and if you don't know translucent plastic is 
vulnerable to breaking a lot more easy than normal plastic but after that you can go ahead and separate the legs and pull them down just like so and then there's actually a tab right in here that will tab into a peg hole right there so tap that into place just like so and fold out the feet and then we take these sections here and just fold them down just like so now for the roof assembly we're just going to take this and pull it up and then we're going to work on that later take the arms for the robot mode whoops camera's out of focus sorry about that take the arms and fold them out like so and now we'll rotate the wheels in. Now for the chest assembly here, there is a certain order you have to do things. So to start off with, we're gonna take this section of the car mode here, push it in all the way. So push that all the way in, then take the robot head and fold it out. And it still might have a little bit of a clearance issue, but once you do that, come around to the back here, take the silver piece and rotate it around while holding the waist and the upper body in place because this figure does have a waist swivel in robot mode but this is a spare joint for the transformation to give the arms clearance to fit underneath the car mode now we're going to take this panel that we just folded up to give the head clearance fold it down some and then there are two places for these two peg uh these two pegs that tab into place so we're going to want to line that up and just lock that into place. We can then take the robot mode fists and fold them out just like so. Rotate those down. Now for the backpack. What you're gonna to wanna to do for the backpack is fold the doors just like this to give the roof clearance. And I'm gonna fold my camera up a little bit. Take this section here, and you can see this is all clear plastic, so be very careful. Um, fold this in on a double hinge and that will just collapse upon itself and then you can fold the doors up and this whole assembly will rest just like that then once you do all that make sure everything's tabbed into place locked into place make sure his knees stay locked in here we have studio series 86 deluxe class jazz in his robot mode and the robot mode looks like jazz i mean just like the vehicle mode it looks exactly like him. Now there are Toy Hacks decal sets you can get to give him a lot of the racing stripes and stuff he had like on the uh, wheel wells here at the ankles and stuff. Uh, me personally, I feel like the figure looks great without it. But um, yeah, this is G1 Jazz. Uh, taking a look at the details and whatnot, we can see all the silver paint here on the feet and shins, all the details that have been sculpted in. And here we got some blue paint there on the waist. No paint on the hands or anything. Uh, paint carries over from the uh, the car mode and whatnot. You got the Autobot insignia right there. And that head sculpt, that head sculpt is perfect. It is jazz through and through. You got the nice silver paint, the blue visor, the black helmet. Looks absolutely fantastic. And from the back, this figure manages his kibble from car mode very, very well. I mean, yes, it is a bit of a backpack and it does stick off. But um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. The my main issue with in terms of aesthetics is that the legs are hollow here, and one thing I do have a big issue with is in the knees. They are way too loose, and they have a tendency to come unpegged from the transformational joint, which is fine. It's something you can work around, but it is kind of annoying to have something like that happen maybe when you're stop motion animating or just trying to pose this guy on a shelf. Now, speaking of posability, Jazz has actually got quite a bit. The head is on a ball joint, which allows some downward movement, some upward movement, and a full 360 spin. Arms are on a hinge joint, so he can move outwards. And then there is the transformational hinge here from the vehicle mode, which allows you a little bit more articulation. Arms can spin full 360. You got a full 360 bicep swivel, 90 degree elbow bend, no wrist swivel, unfortunately. Waist swivel, full 360 if you move the backpack out of the way. Legs can kick forward a decent degree and can kick back a little bit further than forward. Um, legs can kick outward to a decent degree and you do have a thigh swivel, a knee bend, and as you can see, you can use the transformational hinge to get a little bit more articulation. Now that is one thing like I was just talking about, it is annoying to try to pose the figure in the, in the transformational joint come undone. But then you actually do have a very impressive ankle rocker. So overall, Jazz is very poseable when in robot mode. Now for a Studio Series size comparison, here is the Transformers Studio Series 07 Jazz, and we can see this figure is significantly shorter. 
So, size comparison there. Here is the Power of the Primes Deluxe Class Jazz, and while transforming this figure, I was reminded about how much I hate it. This figure is not held up at all, but anyway, size comparison wise, you can see that um, Power of the Primes Jazz is just a little bit taller than the Studio Series Jazz. And for that Transformers 86, the movie reference, here is Springer for a Voyager class size comparison. So you can see how these two scale side by side. So there you have. So overall, what are my official thoughts and opinions on Studio Series 86 Deluxe Class Jazz? He is a really good figure. I give him a solid recommend. He's definitely the best jazz figure we have gotten in the mainstream toy line, aside from, you know, third party figures and whatnot. Uh, yeah, he's a great figure. And he does everything you really need him to do, and he does what he sets out to accomplish. He looks like Jazz, he poses really well, and he has a really good-looking vehicle mode. Uh, I have stated my issues with the figure. You know, the leg joints, that's kind of a problem uh, with the tab in and all that connection stuff. Um, the translucent backpack. I have heard just the scariest of stories and seen pictures of this thing shattering. <laughs> And it terrified me when I got it first out the box, but as long as you're careful, you should be fine. Uh, just don't go manhandling the backpack. Just take your time. Don't force anything, and you should be fine. And I mean, other than those issues that I've really talked about, it is a great figure. He looks really good in both modes, and he's a great representation of Jazz if you don't have G1 Jazz in your collection. So overall, I give him a solid recommend. Just watch out for those issues. But I mean, other than that, I feel like you're really going to enjoy this figure. But guys, that's all for me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of Studio Series 86 Jazz in the comment section below. And be sure to hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me. Champion Productions, signing off. I'm still a garbage toy.